Hi, welcome to Wrinkles Society of Hope. My name is Summer. Wrinkles is a platform built for women to share their stories of wrinkles that they had to press through in order to become the women that they are today. Wrinkles stands for women rejoicing and nourish, courageous with a K, life encouraging stories. Women who care enough to share. I would love for you to come to our Wrinkles family and share your story to provide motivation and encouragement for some other woman. Now today, one of those courageous women has come to share her story. And if you enjoy her story, give her a thumbs up and hit subscribe and share to my YouTube channel. I can't wait to hear from you and I hope you have a great day. Hello, Wrinkles family. I'm super excited um, to bring in someone I just met who wrote a phenomenal book that I had just started to read, and I had to bring her to the Wrinkles family today. So, Miss Cindy, can you please introduce yourself to the Wrinkles family? Hi, I'm Cindy Brown. Um, thank you so much, Miss Summers, for this invite. I am truly grateful, honored, and humbled at this. Um, but it's awesome to be here, so I'm ready to answer any questions and have a little discussion. I'm, I'm ready. Awesome, awesome. Well, as the Wrinkles family love to hear, we first want to hear about, and you have flawless skin as well. I've been having some beautiful women on the Wrinkles uh, family. And so if you have, I'm trying to look, if you have any physical wrinkles or if you remember when you got one little wrinkle, um, how did you feel about that physical wrinkle? Girl, I got 60 years for this one. Whoa. Um, How old are you? Well, I'll be 61, God willing, in November. Oh, you look amazing. Yes. Oh, for all God. That's all God. Uh, but, um, you know, that's really, that's a hard time to go by when you start getting wrinkles and gray hair, you know. But um, I, I really embraced it. I embraced the, the first wrinkle and every wrinkle afterwards, just like I did with my gray hair, because it's a blessing to even live long enough these days to have a wrinkle or two or to have gray hair. So I embraced it. Oh, that's awesome. That is such a blessing. Yes. Yeah. And through life, we go through physical wrinkles, but we also go through emotional wrinkles. And can you tell us about a time that you had to press through a wrinkle in life? Girl, it was so many. Let me see if I can. I'm, I'm going to touch on this one because I did ask God beforehand which one to share of the wrinkles. And I think this is very important for our society today uh, of being molested within your family. And, uh, you know, as a kid, that happens and you don't have a full grasp of what's going on. I mean, you don't have nobody to talk to. You're afraid to talk to anybody because you're told not to. Yeah. And so you grow up with this inside of you all of this time mm. and you don't even connect all the dots until for me, I have to speak for me until I decided that I, I couldn't handle it anymore. It came out in relationships. It came out uh, in parenting. It came out in so many different ways that we just get comfortable in. And I remember when I turned my, truly turned my life over to God, and he started tearing away, away those layers. And uh, then I realized, look, that was their problem. It wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be held down, uh, shamed or, or guilt written. I don't need to do any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and ain't nobody going to be mad but the devil. Yeah. But that's how I became free. That's how I began to really love myself, to know myself, because I turned it over to, to God and he helped me through it. But it was a lot of things that I had to go through to get to that point. But if you don't give up, and I threw in the towel a few times, but God threw it back. He said, no, I'm not done with you yet. So, you know, I had to pick it up, wipe myself off and get back in here. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah. And that is something that a lot of people don't speak to, especially when it's within the family. Yes. So, you know, coming forward and, and bringing that is so powerful because there's so many people out there that's dealing with that. Right. You know, what would you tell your younger self going through that? What advice would you give that younger Cindy going through that? 
it's okay to tell that someone hurt you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which I do now with my granddaughters. Um, I've had the little talk, but you have to do it on their level and to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to scare them, but you do want to start right then building that type of relationship. When I was growing up uh, with parents, it's not as open as it is today, you know, with parents talking about everything and anything and, and that type of thing. A lot of things they were used to suppressing and putting up under the rug and you got the big elephant in the room, you yeah. know, kind of. Situation. But today is different. So when you can start talking to your young girls and boys at a very young age, that will help them also. Because I tell my grandbabies now, you can tell Grancy anything. I said, and don't let nobody tell you not to tell me. Because if they say don't tell, that's when you really tell. And that's how I kind of talk and walk them through it. Which for me, they are the little me. Yeah. I start now. That's awesome. That is so powerful. And, and the best, especially how young are your grandchildren? When did you start talking? Uh, eight, seven and the youngest one will be three in January. Mm -hmm. And I started when they were about uh, four or five. I start now. I start with the bullying. Uh, we talk through that type of stuff with kids because if you've noticed on online media, there's so many uh, suicides among our young people, you know, from being bullied and peer pressure and and all of these things. And I've worked with uh, group homes with um, adolescents between the ages of 10 and 18 for over 35 years. Mm -hmm. I have seen the worst of the worst, yet I've seen the best of the best. And I've seen some miraculous healing and I've seen some destruction. Yeah. So for me, the goal is to be able to help any young person in any way from mistakes I've made, my children might've made, I've heard somebody make, I try to share that because we're going to make them. Yes, yes. So what's the outcome going to be? You have a choice. I think about um, Tamar in the Bible, the one who was uh, raped by her brother. Yeah. Well, you notice the end of that story, it doesn't say much more about her other than she was secluded. She kept herself in and together. And I remember reading that story years and years ago. And I, it reminded me of my own molestation. And that encouraged me and empowered me to really start talking about it, especially with younger kids, because I don't want to be, and I don't want nobody else to be that particular Tamar that secluded herself in her shame and her guilt. Once you free, say who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. And it can and shall be done. I speak that. Oh, love it. Love it. Thank you so much for that. That is so awesome. And I hope that some young girls hear this if they're in a need to hear it, whoever needs to hear it. This is a powerful message for a lot of women that have been going through these things. Really. Right. Now that you have grown through and it sounds like worked through some of those things, there's a shirt that you get made. And on that shirt, it's a phrase or, or a word that is printed that identifies who you are today what would that phrase or word be well i carry it with me diligently nowadays and that's what i actually named my book oh my shirt would be i challenge you i challenge, I challenge you and it entails different things that we go through as women um and of course, molestation and rape and trust and forgiveness, all of that stuff is in this book. So for my shirt, I challenge any woman. I don't care what color. I don't care what size. I challenge you to get in here and work all the infection out so that you can heal and go on and be and get into your purpose. That's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. And with your book, can you explain the reason why I loved your book is that it breaks down you know, um, each lesson. So can you explain how your book works so that people can know and where they can get your book as well? Oh, thank you for that. I, I've always read, okay, I got to tell this little story right before. Oh. I've always read a lot. And I was into good novels because, you know, I would stress over things. And so when I get into a good book, it takes me out of the real life and what's going on for a moment. And so I said, I think I could write a book. I believe I could write a book. And on the other hand, you're like, mm -mm, you can't do that. What makes you think you can write a book, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, one day, I think I was at home watching a good movie. I think that's what it was. And God dropped that title, I Challenge You, in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, hmm, okay. 
um, I challenge you. And then it started coming out over about a couple of months, just different views of what this book would be about. And I have the kind of relationship with God where I'm like, uh, you want me to talk about what? Because uh, I haven't even worked through that yet, Lord. So it's so true when he will meet you where you are mm-hmm. and he will communicate with you to where you'll get it. Yeah. And so that's how you have to communicate with me because I'm hard-headed, right? <laughs> I have grown through the years. And so he, he just started giving me these uh, the words like trust like forgive and forgiveness is two weeks in here because i know that's like swallowing the poison and hoping that that person dies you know kind of thing and that's a lot of stuff in in forgiveness and so he gave me all of these weeks to work through so he gives you the definition i have to say he gives it to you because he gave it to me so he gives you the definition of the words and then he uses my personality to put it in a paragraph or two. And then he wants to challenge you mm. to work through that. So it's weekly. It's supposed to be set up for each week for a whole That's how it's. And not just that, but to journal. Because it's so awesome when you can look back and see where you've grown. Because when you can see that and know that you did that, now you're able to offer an olive branch and help somebody else. But if you notice, I said afterwards, because we should have no business trying to help somebody else and we haven't been helped yet. My son always says, hurt people hurt people. Yes. Well, guess what? Heal people will help heal people. Mm. Love it. Love it. And where could they purchase the book? Uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Awesome. Right. So uh, they have it on the the audio where you can download it that way, and they have the paperback and they have uh, the hardback. And it's really interesting that you ask that because I really wrote this book back in 2011. Wow! God gave me the book. I wrote the book. I they didn't. You know, you don't read the small writing, and I didn't read the small writing, and so it cost so much more to edit the book, right? And I, I'm like. Uh, uh, I'm not about to pay that kind of money to edit the book. It was only a few errors in the book, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't think about the book anymore. I, God gave it to me. I accomplished it. Good job, Cindy. But through the years, I would tell people that I wrote a book, and they would say, well, where can I buy the book? I'm like, oh, well, I don't think you can buy the book because I never got to the, to the that stage of the final edit or to do the book signing. I never got to those stages. And finally, one of the young ladies at my job said, Miss Cindy, I would really like to read that book because I've been through some stuff. Yeah. I said, okay, Cindy, it's time for you. Go call the book company um, and get this rolling again. So you never know when God's getting ready to use something that you might have done 10, 20 years ago. But he will turn that bad boy around and work it in his favor, okay? And so that's what he did. And um, it, it's... <laughs> It just blows my mind. I haven't gotten a dime from the book. People are like, you should be making money now. It wasn't about the money, and it's still not about the money. If one person can get rid of that stuff and start walking in their purpose, then my living has not been in vain. Oh, that's awesome. I did what he told me to do. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, I do have another book, <laughs> but this is one that, I wanted to do the first time, but God said, no, not so. You're going to do this one. So this time I'm going to do one. It's going to be kind of different than normal books, too. So it's going to be part fiction and nonfiction. It's going to be my story with some added in there. I can't wait. I can't wait. About that one. Yeah. (laughs) Now, what other projects are you working on right now or doing right now in the community? Oh my gosh, I do arts and crafts also. Uh, I've taken, I've done some painting. I bejewel um, cups and mugs. Uh, I do t-shirts now. I do some of everything. This brain up here just goes and goes. And that's why I was encouraging you to get a journal. Uh, so you can start writing down ideas and sayings. And it's just so much. There's just so much. I'm always busy and on the go. How can people follow you? What's the avenue? Facebook page, and all they have to do is look up Cindy Brown, and um, they can follow me that way. I did. My son had talked me into doing, what's one of them other ones? <laughs> Instagram? 
Oh, that's why I hadn't done one. But uh, <laughs> that that one, I'm starting to get out there a little bit more. I've had a lot of push, you know, from family and friends that I need to get on Instagram. I need to do more with what I'm doing. And um, so slowly I'm, you know, trying to get out there and do a little bit more because there's so much in me that I do want to share to others because I believe that everybody has a jewel down on the inside that just needs to come out and shine. The jewel is inside, but it shines on the outside and everybody has it. Yours might be a ruby and mine might be an emerald, but we have a jewel down on the inside. I agree. And I love it. I can't wait to see my jewel shine. <laughs> That's it, bro. And you hold your head up and shoulders back because everything God made was good. Yes. Everything. So he didn't mean to say some people or some women or certain colors. He said everything that he made was good. Yes, I agree. Thank you yeah. so much for coming to the Wrinkles family, Cindy. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to Miss Loretta Pleasant. <laughs> yes, Miss Loretta Pleasant invited us, introduced us over right. Marco Polo. <laughs> and now I've got somebody else to talk to and, and follow and right. promote your book especially get the book i'm telling you um everyone the, the book is just sensational and like you said he worked through challenge you to work through some things and we all have some things to work through right because if you say you don't the, the truth not you know you know i won't say but i'm being nice <laughs> but because we all got some stuff all right <laughs> exactly thank you miss cindy brown i appreciate it so much <laughs> uh, you have a good evening god bless you and like i said my prayers are going to be for you that god is going to be able to build you up and build you out and he will enlarge your territory that's what he's going to do thank you so much goodbye wrinkles family <laughs>